delicious. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? We are with a New York friend here in LA, Ryan Benson. What's up, guys? Half Yo. Irish, half Filipino. My dad immigrated from Ireland when he was 18, and he's been in the States ever since. Wait, so your dad and mom are kind of like fobs? Yeah. From their respective 100%. countries. 100%. I'm looking forward to showcasing the other half of my culture to you guys. All right, everybody, in this video, we are going to be exploring this Irish gastro pub. That means we're going to be eating some very traditional Irish food, and then we're going to be eating some modern fusion Irish American food. And I've got an Irish looking rugby on. Let's, Let's go. go. When you look at the ancestry of Caucasians in America, the second largest group of ancestry is Irish American. Ireland is such a small country, and for them to have such a big presence in a country as big as the United States, it's pretty much unprecedented. One of the, one of the biggest things here, like a lot of Irish pubs, like they have a huge selection of beers and whiskeys. Can we do a little Irish jig in here? I hear the music. <laughs> I can't. All right, guys, so here we have our appetizers. Uh, on the left side, we have our more traditional Irish fare. This is the Irish stew. So this dish actually comes with beef. In Ireland, um, it's actually more traditional to have it with lamb or mutton. Irish stew with mashed potatoes. There's a lot of flavor in here. It's really nice to have like the different vegetables, like the, the carrots Man. and the celery. I thought it was really interesting with the amount of mashed potatoes that are in here. Yeah. And obviously, that is a deserved stereotype of Irish food that is there very potato heavy. Potato right? heavy. Irish nachos. On the Irish nachos, they put in corned beef, bacon, cheese. Yeah, pastrami too. Pastrami too. For the Irish, I think that's more Irish American, kind of Jewish American. Jewish American, yeah. There's some Jewish elements because like, I think Jewish food is so popular in New York and on the East Coast, and like Irish people are heavily from the East Coast. Yeah, they're good. They're really good. These are house-made potato chips. Yo, surprisingly, I thought this was gonna be too salty and, and too it's, fatty. And it's honestly like perfectly. Mm. We got clam chowder tots. Galway, where my family's from, is known for their oysters and their seafood. There's an oyster fest like every single year that celebrates like Irish oysters. Oh, this clam chowder is good. That's really good. To speak to your point about Irish seafood, the clam chowder is really solid. Coming up next, we got clam chowder. I don't eat that much clam chowder, but when I do, I like it with clam shells in it. How about that? The chowder tastes different with the clams in it. Great appetizers, a lot of mm. fusion there, some very Irish elements, but obviously not entirely Irish. Right. These dishes are made to be a little bit more authentic. So right here, we have your Irish breakfast. Here we have bacon, eggs, sausage, and a corned beef hash with some vegetables on the side. So this is corned beef hash. I've barely ever had corned beef hash, but it's essentially what? Corned beef and hash browns. Yeah, right? corned beef mixed with potatoes and then usually finished in a skillet. The difference between a UK breakfast and an Irish breakfast though, you have black or white blood pudding and honestly it's my favorite thing to eat out of an Irish breakfast but not many people like it. Top, Top of, of the morning, morning Irish, Irish breakfast. breakfast. Mm. All right, right here we have a shepherd's oh. pie. Now, most shepherd's pie is made with lamb. Beef was expensive. Like it, it, oh, it was only for the rich people, right? Yeah, it was only for the rich people. So. People would eat a lot of lamb, mutton, and a lot of offal too back in the back in the old days. O F F A L. The Mixed intestines of and boiled like sheep. A shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie. Uh, that's good. It's kind of like a lamb stew with mashed potatoes and cheese. I would say the potato profile and the shepherd's pie, those were more pronounced. So here we have Limerick's edition of a scotch egg. Now a scotch egg is usually an egg wrapped in uh, minced meat and then deep fried. Sounds like some crazy like Japanese invention. Yeah. It kind of like, looks like katsu. Here we have a Guinness mustard. So they kind of put like their oh. own like Irish twist on it. Oh, oh yeah, split it. Oh, oh my gosh. The, oh my God. The scorch egg. Honestly, it's one of the one of the hardest dishes to cook properly. Cilantro. Mm. Wow, that's interesting. Hit me. Do people speak only English in Ireland or is there other languages? The main language in Ireland is English but people still go to school to learn Gaelic. And what we just said earlier was Gaelic for cheers. Slantia. Right now we have corned beef okay. and cabbage. Corned beef is salted uh, meat, uh, salted beef. Um, it was actually one of the biggest exports uh, from Ireland in the 1700s. Irish Irish people would not eat it because beef was so expensive. 
Corned beef and cabbage. Um, it's not the most complex dish. Uh, it's not like the most like party dish either, but it's good. It has everything you need. It has it's low carb, has some potatoes in it. So the first thing that I do when I go to Ireland, there's this fish and chip restaurant in uh, Galway called McDonough's, and they serve the best fish and chips in Ireland. Oh. All right, so here we have some grilled green peas with bacon. Fish, fish and, and chips. chips. Chewy exterior, soft, tasty cod inside. He uh, sprinkled a little bit of Cajun on there before he fried it. So I, I don't think that's Irish, right, that Cajun? Not very Irish, but usually you soak it in like malt vinegar. All right, so these chips, to me, are starting to taste more European. They have a thicker, more soggy, less crispy texture to them, like and maybe an average American would prefer. <laughs> the ones in Ireland are a little bit, a little bit wider, a little bit thicker. Do they like flat, like planks, like yeah, two like, by fours? Exactly. Like Yo, Ryan. You put on an Irish, what is this, I Irish wish you were here. I put on a Limerick's hat, and it kind of goes to show you, maybe in a way, like the classic Irish pub mentality. They're like, you know what, you guys are filming here, showcasing our food, take some of our merch, you know? Yeah, honestly, Irish hospitality is some of the best hospitality I've ever had. Like, going, going to Ireland, like, everyone's just so, so nice. Irish and Italian people, at one point, before other immigrants entered the US, were not considered white. Yeah. They were like off white. Shout out to Virgil. So we got bangers and mash right here. This is very UK uh, influenced. Bangers, bangers and mash. mash. What's the banger and I'm assuming the mashed potatoes. The Yo, mash. I noticed there's kale in here. I heard this is very traditional to have the kale and the mashed potatoes. Hey, shout out to Irish being on the kale wave before everybody else though. When you saw it, it looked like gourmet bangers yeah, and mash. Yeah, exactly. Like normally, like when I'm in London or in England and I get bangers and mash, it doesn't come out looking like this. Like this is very upscale compared to what I'd normally get. But you said this is more uh, Irish American. I would, I would say this is a Jewish sandwich. All right, so it's more <laughs> Jewish, but it, but it uses corned beef, which is Irish. Yes. The invention of the Reuben is, yeah, obviously invented, I think, by a Jewish person. I feel like some Irish American family had taken it on as like, well, it's corned beef and it's tasty, so let's eat it. Oh my gosh, yes, look at this. This one of the last things you would ever let in a video. Okay. All right. The Reuben mm -hmm. sandwich. Oh my god. You know, honestly, this, this Reuben is, this might be heresy to say, this is just as good as any Reuben I've had in New York City. Yeah, it's it is. better than cats. This is better than cats, for sure. Oh, that was hella good. The Woo! amount of cheese, just the right amount of sour cream, a lot of corned beef, but not too much. Question is, is it better than Jane Pang's Reuben back in the day? The one that I fell in love with. Objectively, at first, it, it, is, is, it, it, is, is, it is. It is. But there's something about right. a homemade Reuben. Right, of course, yeah. that's beautiful in itself. But man, this is delicious. You know, it'd be good to wash this down with a nice cold pint of Guinness. Let's do it. Oh, oh man, yo, man, this is cool. I, I need to wash some down. All right. All right. Very citrusy, I like it. Yeah. So guys, what color would you say this Guinness is? That's almost black. black. It looks like Coke. So when you take a Guinness up and you hold it to the light, it actually comes out as a dark ruby red drink. What kind of sets it apart from a normal beer is that super creamy foam, and that comes from being cast with uh, nitrogen. Slancha, salute. Cheers. Cheers to the Irish. Man, that foam is like, bubbles are really small. Bubbles are super small because of the nitrogen. Right. Usually the CO2 is like a lot, the bubbles are like a lot larger. And so you don't get this like nice creamy uh, uh. foam that you would. This almost tastes like a meal in it of itself. Yes, Dude, yeah. good thing we ate all that hearty food because we're having hearty beer. And if I didn't have hearty food, I would be red right now. All right guys, we got some burgers. We are at the burger section. Uh, not traditional. Not but, traditional, but, but I mean, common. A burger is a burger. Anywhere you go in the world. Favorite Irish characters in, in media ever. Michael Flatley, 
Conor McGregor. You got all the Irish bands like Dropkick Murphys, Bono. Okay, you fair, too. Fair. Oh. oh, Bono is Bono. Irish. Graham Norton on BBC. Conan Conan O'Brien's Conan O'Brien is Irish American. Yeah. Yo, is that jam in that burger? Yeah, so there's a strawberry rhubarb jam on this burger. Um, it also comes with like a Guinness mustard, bacon. That's the hipster burger. On this burger, we have the Limerick's burger. It comes with a Guinness beer cheese, uh, bacon. I think that's it. Let's try this, uh, this hipster burger out. Hipster, hipster burger. burger. That rhubarb cuts nicely through the beef. Yeah, you got that like little punch of like the mustard coming through. Oh, the little Guinness mustard, man. Yeah. That's actually really tasty. There's some creaminess, some sourness, really nice beef. That My beef God, that is a tasty burger. Limerick burger. burger. I can already taste the blue cheese. Wow. Ooh. Tastes super different. Like very umami. Now that blue Yo, cheese Yo, I like the other one, but I might have to say this one is tastier. It hits you with that salt. And then you get like that funk of the blue cheese, the porkiness of like the bacon. It's, it's super good burger. One of the partners here at Limerick Tavern, you got a surprise for us. It's gonna be crazy though, it's gonna wow you. Be ready. So thank you. Wow. My goodness. Look at this is a 60 ounce, 60 ounce dry age steak. 30 days. Wow. 30 days dry age. So they're not playing around here at Limericks. Oh, fee, five, four, fum. I, I smell, smell the, the blood, blood of, of an uh, Irish man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold the other end of the tomahawk to make it. Okay, we're getting there. Getting to the rare pieces. Yeah, I bet, you know, my Irish accent's been settling back in since uh, the beginning of the video. Yeah. I, think yeah, I, I think it's all the mention of Conor McGregor. <laughs> Dry H <laughs> Tomahawk. Mmm. Wow. Primal. One thing about this Tomahawk steak, I gotta say. So I had this kind of like salty, peppery crust that he was seasoning on. Yeah. And the mashed potatoes really balance out the salt a right. lot. It makes it super, super tender. Like when you dry age meat, it takes a lot of the moisture out and you lose some weight, but the muscle fibers become super, super, super tender. If you guys have ever seen a, a steak get dry aged, obviously it's moldy on the outside, but they cut off the outside. Yeah. And then what we're eating is the inside, the non-moldy part, obviously. Right. Throughout this whole experience, I feel like I learned about um, a piece of Americana that I knew on the surface, but I hadn't delved very deep into. Why do Irish people all fight like this? <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, what was your favorite thing you had today? Honestly, the, the bangers and mash was like, one of the best bangers and mash I've ever had. For me, I actually really enjoyed the corned beef. So number one, obviously the Reuben sandwich. You guys can agree, it was delicious. It was, it was. Oh my goodness, um, off the hook. All right guys, well I think Dennis has one more surprise for us over at the bar. Um, Some Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey. All right, you know what? We're gonna do our major takeaways at the bar. So <laughs> right now they have a lineup of very uh, distinct whiskeys. Right now we have a, a Jameson 18 year, uh, a Hakushu 12 year, which is actually extinct. They no longer distill that. And uh, a Yamazaki 18 year. It was only until recently uh, that Japanese whiskeys became like super popular uh, as they won like whiskey of the year. You have this dichotomy of like Irish whiskeys versus Japanese whiskeys. So we're gonna try uh, the Jameson 18 right now first. It's gonna give you a smoother taste and then a better flavor. Wow, there's a, there's actually no burn on that Jameson. Normally like when you go to the club or you like go to open up like a bottle of Jameson, you kind of have to let it air out a little bit, or else it gets like super, super harsh. This was like super full bodied, um, very sweet. No, it went down pretty easy. No, no, no. Er, no. <laughs> literally, no er. literally All the Irish pubs I've been to, this has definitely been some of the best food that I've gotten. And it's been cool to kind of have um, traditional Irish food um, as close to authentic as possible with the Irish American uh, like cuisine as well. Me, myself, I do like Japanese whiskeys just a little better. Uh, how good. would you say it uh, differs? Well, it's gonna give you more of an oak taste. You get, like, right off the bat, it has a much more pungent smell than the, than the Jameson. It's like, whew, just like smelling a fresh bark. Like just No, I feel like I'm out in the woods and I just cracked open like a tree stump and yeah. I'm just like, there's so many things that are like so American, 
like um, whiskey and but they're actually Irish. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know how I was thinking about it when people say I'm a real meat and taters type of guy, they're almost saying I'm a real Irish type of guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It actually has helped me think deeper about like American culture. Last but not least, we got the Yamazaki 18. This is probably gonna be our most expensive drink here. This is gonna put you back at 90 a glass. Woo! 90. 90 a glass. So this but, but people but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's very much worth it. How it has much, good taste. How much would the whole bottle be? Roughly, I, I would say it's probably gonna put you back like two or three hundred. Yeah. Actually super smooth. Super smooth. Yeah. Wow. Very subtle. No, no, it's like, I thought the flavor note down. was gonna go up like this, and the flavor note, it yeah. dipped on. Right, well, for us, we cover a lot of different types of Chinese food and Asian food. Elevated, traditional, cheap, everything in between. And I think it was really cool to see, like, kind of like, a little bit one notch up of Irish food. To have Limerick's Tavern serving delicious Irish food, I think it's amazing. I think people gotta check it out. You got to check this spot out. I wanna say thank you guys for watching. Please let us know other cuisines you'd like to see us try at the bottom. Huge shout out to Ryan Benson. Follow him on social media. I wanted to, to leave off by saying thank you in Gaelic. Irish Gaelic. Good evening. Until next time, we out. Peace. Here at Limerick's Tavern, shout out to them. They have a lot of great weekly specials if you guys are thinking about coming by. Monday, you have a burger and beer for only $10. That is a crazy good deal. Tuesday, you got steak and beer for $15. Wednesday, you got half off wings and wine and whiskey. And then Thursday, they have Taco Thursday. $1.50 each. Sunday, all day happy hour, guys. Definitely check out Limerick's Tavern. It's out here in Alhambra. This is not really a place that you would expect to see an authentic or even just elevated Irish gastro pub. But man, the food here is at the right standard of all the other great food out here. So check it out.